cool what he's done with himself over the summer. They're always walking this way. The one that's with them is a shooter. Well, Nick and I just got permission to a new piece, a couple new pieces actually. So we're gonna try to divide and conquer tonight. The A team is headed. That was our road. No one stops. <laughs> Like you could go turn yeah, around right I knew there. I that we would get on deer. If we oh, those here. are bucks right there. Put it to them, Nick. Things are looking good. No, they're dope. It's never run. Like I was trying to say, the A-team is headed to a spot that's got beans on it. A-team being us in this situation. And the other guys are going to check out a different property that the guy gave us permission to. A-team being us and not them. Seems like the ground that we got permission to is pretty good, though. He just doesn't have time to hunt in the next week or so and let us know. He said, hey, get after it showed us some deer that he's killed in and around this place or these places but it was very generous to him to just share since he knew he wasn't gonna be able to that's been kind of the consensus in this area is a lot of the people hunt but they'll also let you go which is mm -hmm. you can't find that many places in the world anymore but it seems like we get permission to hunt turkeys some places we go pretty easily but usually when it comes to deer it's kind of a no-go but same with turkey is if you're just polite to people and talk to them for a while sometimes they'll just offer up a spot yep. to you or you can kind of work it into the conversation and i just usually just start asking about if they see deer around stuff like that and then sometimes people will be like oh yeah there's deer everywhere and then you can just say something like well you want me to help you out with that problem <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> times when they when they say no you know if you know if you just continue having a conversation with them they might change their mind yeah. i've had seen that happen many times yep they just realize you're an all right human being and they trust you mm -hmm. a little bit. And they may only give you permission for a day. They may say, hey, yeah. you can have it for today. But other than that, no, that's yeah, all you if need. If that's the case, if you just continue to respect their property mm -hmm. and be friendly with them and check back in on them, you never know what you might end up with. So just trying to maintain a relationship and not take advantage of the landowner. Yep, winning hearts and minds. Yeah. Hearts and minds. I think just turns that Texas charm on. Another deer running in these cat hills. We're just about there. Hopefully we can get into something. A shooter, eh? Oh yeah, it's a shooter. He's a nice one, a, da a dandy one. I don't know if I got any footage of him, but hopefully we're gonna get some way closer. Think it could work or not? I think it could work. We just gotta shoot him before the wind gets to him. Yeah. Put her batter. Let's get at her. Let's just kind of be dumb. All right, I'll follow you. <laughs> I mean, why not? of where he's at straight between us basically yeah we could just get up there if we wanted but he might hear us getting up there too you know he's just right straight through there right yep Is he's still there yeah i can see his rack right now probably shouldn't get no closer which one of those green bushes is he in front of? He just left them go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw him move. Going back in there. Yeah. Kind of got a cool thing going on up top there. Yeah, it's pretty cool what he's done with himself over the summer. He <laughs> put in the work? Yes, sir. Dad was like, we're over here at this piece. And we just found a really nice pup. Do we have permission to go for it? They must be close to it. <laughs> yeah, we got permission. You're like, okay, I'll talk to you later. That's all cattails behind them, so they might just be going into them cattails. Mm -hmm. So you have a double throat patch? Yeah. That's what I like so much about him. That's what it is. <gasps> that makes sense. Should we just try to eat out of here and make sure there's not a bigger one over there? Go back to the car and drive around. Yeah. 
just really pick out which one we want. Yeah. As of right now, he's the winner. Yeah. Great success. <laughs> Great success. I think so. That's a nice one. Yeah. He's in a pretty good spot, too. A good spot for us to hide right there. Yeah, and for the wind tomorrow. Yeah, the wind will be just like this. It's going to blow pretty hard tomorrow, too. Yeah, I feel like if we watch him go in there from a distance and just plan on being there all day, he's going to get up. Yeah. And if he's somewhere on that edge, we might be able to kill him yeah. at any point during the day. Yeah. He's just feeding on that edge still. Yeah. I think we can slip back down. Go check that other field where we spotted the first ones at. Lead one's a nice buck. Yeah, lead one's real nice. Get that new THP Puffy and get to work. You can get it on the website, thehuntpublic.com. Use code NECK to get 10% off. Go find one. Pulling back down into the spot where Nick and I first spotted this about us last night. I just dropped him off. We saw three different shooter bucks. We're just gonna try to get eyes on as much different country as possible. Just spotted a pretty big one, but I lost him. There he is. They're hunting and you're cold and you're like I need something else you can get this four-wheel drive police hoodie <laughs> from the hunting public website they won't. This one's nice and hot. There you go. saw him going that way and then the way the rolls in the hill are I couldn't tell I thought he'd gone down into this drainage 
he definitely could have got down there, but I think it's worth just going out there and getting Ram in, yeah. seeing if he's out there. Okay, so he is, he is in the drainage then. Yeah. So there's like those trees out there in that drainage. The way he came down, it looked like he was on the outside of them. Okay. So somewhere in this vicinity. I think that might be the one that we saw last night down there in the same spot, pretty much. And he looked like he had a G4, like a little one. Mm -hmm. I mean, he definitely cut us up through there. With the, like, I was losing him all the time. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to go out there and try it. Good enough, eh? Yep. Good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, he is a nine point. I think the old chocolate horn nine's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Those cattails are further down, ain't they? The ones out in the field that he was in. No, we're looking at them right there. The green ones, yeah. So we've glassed this buck, and there's this one isolated patch of cattails out here in the middle of this big bean field. That's a real small patch. Like anyway, this buck is in there. There's a doe in there for sure. And we got a real strong south southeast wind right now. We've just gotten directly above them. We're probably 150 yards from it right now, and we're just gonna ease up there. There's a little lip right before you get into the cattails, and that should put us probably within bow range of the edge. So we're gonna try to get to that lip, look in there, and then if we don't blow them out by then or whatever we're gonna just slip in the rest of the way and from then i have no plan just kind of gonna wing it already kind of winging it Good, we'll kill him tonight in the corner. <laughs> we don't have to waste the rest of our day. Yep, go back up in there by the corner and bed down. We'll be up in there waiting on you this evening. Yeah, we got, we were a lot closer to him than I thought we were. Yeah. But yeah, we got up here, Mike. Well, he cannot be far because I doubt that he's in that narrow little patch. I figured he was, he had to be about right in the green there where he was. I should probably go look at it, it'd be interesting. That corner up there is where we've been seeing all the deer come out in the evenings. And that's right where he just went to, so might be able to make a setup work there this afternoon. When you were knelt down and I was down about his level, you couldn't, it's like, see full on figures, but you could see. Movement. I mean, through the cattails and everything moving, he might have just seen something sitting still, honestly. An object that wasn't there. You go yeah. over there once, maybe I'll film you from his view. I can't see much. This is probably a little higher than a deer's view, honestly. Saw something though, I'd assume. Could have been in this bed maybe too. Because he could see us pretty good if he was right here, I think. Yeah. I guess we should have just hunkered down and stayed low. Trusted that we we're gonna be able to hear him get up. I just like seeing him to know like if he gets up and starts feeding that way, if we gotta do something or make a move. But really, we should have just waited till he got up to. Till we heard him. Yeah, now we know. I forget how loud they are in these cattails. I haven't hunted them as much recently, but it's like, if you're 12 yards away, you're gonna hear them. They yeah. cannot be quiet in there. And I was having my doubts that they were even still in here, uh -huh. just because I didn't see them come in at, at the end, and then we didn't, couldn't tell if they left, you know? Yeah. So then it's just doubt. There's a, you can tell in the footage this morning, and there's a lot of times where I can only see his head, and, and the footage that you won't see is when he's not in the frame, but he disappeared a lot. Like, and just like, this, a little sway like that, it looks flat, but you lose them in there quite a bit, so. We thought maybe he got down to this main ditch that the deer have been bedding along quite a bit. I can't believe we were that close to him. I mean, it's cool. That's real cool. It would have been a lot cooler if we shot him. Should have shot that spike just for being a butthole. <laughs> standing there blowing, yeah. Would it have been? No. No, you know me, I, I killed tons and tons of velvet bucks. <laughs> 
I ain't had a first in a long, long time. Long time. I've done it all. We've been hunting here my whole life. I've been hunting here my whole life. <laughs> all right, we've played with them enough. We'll kill them this season. Yeah, a little midday push, just getting them back. We just wanted up in to. The corner. We wanted to get them out yeah. out of here. Yep. Yeah. And away from there. We want to see a big feed tonight in that corner. And over there. <laughs> Just walked up on a little spike buck right here. Him and another little one came through this morning when me and Cole were sitting up here watching down through this draw. We saw a really nice buck back in here about a mile this morning. And it looked like he went up into the corn, up into maybe a little waterway up there. We're gonna we're gonna go all the way around the perimeter of this cornfield, get the wind in our face, and then come down in on his side and see how close we can get to where he went in at. Make a little set up there and see if he comes out. So let's go in there. This might be the best right here with this low sitting corn. I can shoot over top of it. We can see down through there a little bit better. I think this will work right here. It's quarter after six. I think Greg and I walked all the way around, made a big loop to get into this spot that we're at right now. We're set up like three rows back in this cornfield right now. The buck that I saw this morning went in about 130 yards that direction. He came walking up over top of this hill, walked up to the edge of the corn, and then I couldn't see him anymore. Our thought is that he went up to the corn and either got in a waterway or he took that corn and walked to the edge of it where we couldn't see him and bed it down not too far from that spot because I didn't see him until it was about 8 o'clock in the morning. So he had to be getting close to where he was going to bed down at. Typically, we've been seeing deer get up and move around 7 or 7.30. Seems like these deer like to come out and follow the edge of the corn. So if him or a different one comes out and follows the edge, should be in good shape. Right.
there's the big one. He's down there a good ways. Right in the oh, dead yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be our boy from this morning. Yeah, kind of looks like it. He looks kind of large. We got time. Come on, buddy. Come on with it. Feel through this way. Oh, boy. These things are treacherous. <laughs> Not conducive for crocs. I'm going to see if I can range him. Right at 200 yards. They might hit this edge and start mm -hmm. walking. Yeah, that, that one really seems like he's kind of angled this way. They're all down over that lip. We'll see what happens. Try to get to that second lip up there. I mean, there's nowhere to hide. It's just going to be loud. Yeah, if we're going to, we should. He's walking this way. He is. Yeah. It's a different one actually, but the one that's with him is a shooter too. Yeah. Easy. How far? Over a hundred still, but they're walking, working tighter to the line. shooters a lot of bucks a lot of shooters yeah. we got close that last little move we made i never saw him but jake said that one from this morning was 70 80 think, yards away i don't think i got any good footage of it just because i was trying to stay low yeah but he was comfortable like he was he was looking that way just kind of feeding and then he put his head down and i never saw him after that i figured he was going to feed right up that edge but yeah. must, they both must have just went in yeah. there's kind of a little low spot in the field right there they fed in for a little bit and they, yeah I'm guessing they did what the rest of the deer did and went to the south. I was, I was getting amped when you were like, because you told me you're like, they're feeding this way, 150 yards. It's like, all right. And then you're 70 the next day. And then you're like, 70 yards. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Starting to get nervous. <laughs>
right, y'all, it's the morning of the 8th. Jake and I are headed back into this field where we got to within 12 yards or so of that buck yesterday morning. We got Cole with us this morning. He's gonna be glassing on one end of the field. You can't see everything from just one vantage point of this bean field. So he's gonna go to the north end and we're gonna go down here to the south end where we've been seeing this group of bucks down here and see if we can't get on one of them again. this lane. Yeah, he's walking pretty quick. Can you see him still? I just lost his rack in the cattails. Should we just go for it? Yeah, if we're gonna go, we gotta go quick. Yeah, let's do it.
Question mark. Shooter pass. He is feeding like crazy. You coming this way at all? No. That looks like he's a giant tentacle. <laughs> Sorry, five by five. Before I get jumped. You yeah, try to call him over here or anything? I was thinking about hitting the sequence. Hey! <laughs> I wish I could have one. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, the boys are making a move. Ooh, the boys are moving. The boys are buzzing. It's more excitement than we got. 